Waveform update rate refers to the speed with which an instrument can acquire a waveform and display it on the screen. In oscilloscopes, waveform update rate has become a very important parameter in recent years, with most oscilloscope manufacturers providing what they refer to as fast update rate modes. One of the problems associated with these fast update rate modes, however, is they're limited generally to just viewing the waveforms. And so you'll see specifications on data sheets where, for example, a million waveforms per second being acquired, or maybe 10,000 or 50,000 waveforms per second can be acquired. This is a very interesting specification and it sounds very exciting, but in the real world, why is update rate important? Well, update rate is important for finding rare events, errors that occur in a circuit that don't happen very often. And with the growth of embedded systems, this type of error has become more and more common when, for example, you might have a high-speed electronic circuit operating through an actuator or a motor which is running at a one-second interval, maybe. And so errors can happen in electronically long times where you have maybe 10 to 20 megahertz clocks that operate in a microsecond range, but then the errors are occurring in the second range. One of the most important tests for finding errors is something called a waveform mask test. This is often performed on a digital signal to find violations of timing that would occur in the middle of the digital transitions. And so what I'm gonna do um, here is I'm gonna do a demonstration of update rate using the Rodian Schwartz RTO 1024. The Rodian Schwartz scopes feature an ASIC that performs all of the display processing and waveform mask testing in real-time digital hardware so that the update rate remains very fast, in this case, about 600,000 waveforms per second, even while mask testing is being performed, making the update rate not just a nice fast number, but also a very useful tool for finding these errors. Here I'm looking at a, a demonstration board with a digital signal. We're looking at the signal on the screen right now. I'm gonna adjust the uh, horizontal scale um, just so I can view one cycle of the waveform. So we're looking at one rising edge of this digital signal. And I'm gonna adjust my trigger slope so that I'm triggering on both the falling edge and the rising edge. So now we're seeing a digital transition from zero to one and from one to zero. Now I wanna position this over on the screen a little bit farther to the left so that we can see two transitions on the screen. So now we're looking at one transition from zero to one and then another transition from one to zero and the opposite transition. This is what's known as a data eye pattern. This shows all of the voltage time steps of signal takes on during a bit interval. What you don't wanna see in a signal like this is a transition happening right in the middle there or in the middle over here or over here. Any transitions that occur there would be resulting in bit errors and system failure. So it's very important to make sure they don't happen well at all, or at least not very often, depending upon the system. The way we test this is with a mask. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at the update rate of the screen. That is how quickly are we acquiring and displaying the, the data from screen update to screen update. Now to make it convenient, we actually have a parameter that displays that, uh, that update rate. And you can see right here, the acquisitions per second is showing at 656,000 waveforms per second. Okay, it's about a 1.3 microsecond cycle time between acquisitions. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to increase that to even faster rate. And so one of the things I can do to speed up the update rate is we're right now drawing vectors or lines between the sample points that the ADC, ADC is, is generating. I want to turn off that line drawing by going in my display menu and we'll just turn off and go to dots mode. And now when I do that, my update rate now goes up to one million waveforms per second or one microsecond per update. This is an industry leading specification, especially considering that we're looking at an eye pattern on screen now. Now a lot of oscilloscopes will be able to do that with their fast update rate mode. But the next thing I'm about to do is something that you'll never see on any other instrument. We're going to put up a mask in the middle of this waveform to test for failures or violations in the middle. So I'll take my mask tool, I'll draw a compliance mask, and this is just a very quick way of generating a mask you can actually draw on the screen. So I've drawn a mask here, and what I'm gonna do is activate that mask. And now we're running a mask test 
We're acquiring waveforms, we're testing for errors, and we're, we're capturing the failure rate. Notice the update rate is still 600,000 waveforms per second. So now I'm not just acquiring a waveform, I'm acquiring a waveform, I'm testing it against a complying ma compliance mask, putting up the statistics and doing all of this still at 600,000 waveforms per second. This is important because if I'm trying to find a rare event, I want my update rate as fast as possible. Now this board is designed to generate a random error that causes a failure once every second. At this update rate, it should take about 30 seconds to find that. At a slower update rate, which is typical of most oscilloscopes, this could take minutes to hours and even in some cases days. Of course, no one would wait days to find an error, so they probably wouldn't find the error. So let's go ahead and set this thing up to capture an error. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the instrument to stop next time it finds an error. And so I'm going to go on Event Actions and say Stop Acquisition on Violation. And we're going to wait just a few seconds to see what happens. Now when it finds a violation, the instrument should stop acquisition and the mask will turn red. There we go. It's taking a little while. So we found an error. The instrument stopped and captured that very rare error. And if you look very closely, you can sort of see the dots in here. But remember, I turned off the vectors. So now I can turn them back on so I can get a better view of what happened. So let's turn those vectors back on and you can see um, vectors. You can see the error that occurred. This is the violation in the mask that caused that error. Now, one of the other things that the Rodin Schwartz RTO does is while it's acquiring waveforms and storing them in memory, rather than doing what most oscilloscopes do, and that is you acquire a waveform, store it in memory, and then on the next acquisition, you overwrite the previous waveform, we use our memory always in a segmented mode. So when we acquire a waveform, we put it in memory. On the next acquisition, rather than overwriting that, we move to the next available memory location and store the waveform there. This allows us to have a history available anytime one needs to view it. And in the case of mask failure, it's often a good idea to look at the history. We can access that history by pressing the history button on the front panel. And now we have a history box that allows us to navigate through this history of waveforms. And by turning this knob, I can actually dial back in time. And this is the transition that happened prior to the mask failure. And if you look over here, you'll notice the time was 1.6 microseconds in the past from the, from the failure point. And then as we go back in time, you can see one at a time each one of the waveforms leading up to the failure. Now, in the case of this demo board, we're sort of randomly generating the error. But in the case of a real system, there might often be clues as to when the error is going to occur by looking at the signals leading up to the error. For example, that edge might be creeping slower, slowly towards that mask point and it could allow you to locate the source of the failure very quickly. You can also play the data back kind of like a tape recorder and just watch the recorded waveforms as they go past the mask. And the speed of this recording uh, can be varied from second per update to milliseconds per update um, as so you can actually page through the data very, very slowly. So there you have fast update performance using a real measurement such as mass testing enable you not only to capture rare events, but actually to measure them um, on the oscilloscope.